Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube video channel. Today, I have a very special guest, Dr. Savi and Dr. Carmen. They both in the other side uh, of the uh, uh, the continent. One is in uh, actually, Dr. Savi is in LA. I'm in Cali Northern California, and Dr. Carmen is in uh, Bo uh, um, Colorado, uh, Boulder, Colorado. So um, uh, today, topic going to be. Uh, Sacorium implant and uh, many of you seen a lot of video on internet media but you you never have talked to the doctor, someone who used it before but today we have two uh, a clean, a clinician that use it and teach it so i would like to introduce you and uh, please uh, tell us about um, you know your practice and where you practice and uh, and how long you use it and uh, you are the founder of the company and things like that thank you Yes, so Dr. Carmen, please um, help us uh, start. So my name is Carmen Brook. I am from Colombia. I was a dentist there for 10 years, and then I came to the United States, and I got my DDS here, and after I finished the Loma Linda University in California, I decided to pursue my holistic treatment. So I had been studying for six years holistic dentistry, and I knew about zirconia implants, but I, I didn't want to place them myself. I started referring people to surgeons and to periodontists. Unfortunately, I couldn't find someone to place them the way that I wanted for my patients with laser, with PRF and zirconia. So, so a lot of times I ended up with titanium. So uh, that's why I, I uh, just searching other ways and I found Dr. Javi Oliva and came to my practice. He trained me in my office. So we started placing uh, implants and, and it has been two years and it has been a great chance to have all of the cases from the beginning to the end. And I'm really pleased with the, you know, with the, um, the health, you know, the biocompatibility. And so I'm really happy with that. So uh, because of that, we started as you said, bringing more awareness to other dentists. So we host Dr. Javi here in our office uh, four times a year and teach other dentists how to place these implants and just learn from our protocol. It has been great. It has been, the failures have been minimal and we're really pleased with that. So we want to share that with dentists and guide them and give them a protocol for A to C, just for them to know how to implement that system in their offices. And I love one is, one piece system, I love it because it's really easy. I just had a patient that he came for a follow-up and is ready for the crowns. And I just offered to, to get them to take the digital impressions and just prep a little bit the implant and then he's ready for the crown. So it's very simple. I don't have to manage screws or abutments or so it's really easy. So it's really doable. That's why I want to share this with other dentists. Beautiful. I love that. I, I would be excited to have a chance to, to learn what you guys do. I do traditional uh, implant, uh, and so I, I would be excited to see how uh, you should go to our class. Yep, I, I think it's, it's, it's something something I would uh, look into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting and very easy to do and very beneficial for the patients and for your practice. I, I believe it's so. It's a really good yeah. practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Savi. So um, I come from a family of dentists. My father uh, is a general dentist and my brother did the um, perio program. I did a uh, three-year ortho program. And uh, in our office, we were doing um, uh, multidisciplinary dentistry. And uh, we got uh, a little bit known in the area for um, uh, working with uh, metal-free materials. And at that time, I'm talking uh, two decades ago, um, patients were um, demanding as well implants with uh, no metal. And at that time, um, we started to see some titanium implants with some uh, period issues, like the gum was not uh, too happy, it was red, uh, there was uh, too much probing and uh, bleeding uh, quite often. Um, the uh, prosthetic components, the parts that you were putting putting in and out of the mouth, um, patients were complaining of the smell. So it was um, 
it was some kind of treatment that uh, some patients were demanding uh, function and they were very happy, but the patients that were demanding function, health, aesthetic treatments, and all these type of uh, um, very um, demanding type of dentistry, um, it was difficult to achieve with implants. And then we thought, uh, let's, let's do some uh, research in ceramic implants because every time we see ceramic crowns or inlays or onlays, uh, tissues seem to be very, very healthy. So we did research with ceramic implants and we saw uh, that Japan had done some research in animals and the, um, the osseointegration integration was very good, but the mechanics were not so good. And uh, it happened the same with uh, crowns. In the beginning, the ceramic crowns that were without metal, they, uh, the success rate in terms of mechanics was very poor. But as soon as the materials started to improve and the labs had some uh, know-how on how to do the ceramics, we thought, you know, maybe zirconia, mm, if uh, crowns are not breaking in half, if bridges are not breaking in half, if many, many things that you do with zirconia in terms of tooth restoration is not breaking, uh, maybe we should give a chance to implants. Mm -hmm. So we started to do some research with implants until like many, many, many uh, animals and mechanical testing and uh, surface treatment, all kinds of uh, research that you can imagine until uh, we had some prototypes and then we started to do some uh, treatments on patients. And finally, the shapes that we have, because we have uh, seven different shapes, the seven different shapes that we have, uh, we are able to restore almost every tooth in the mouth. And this has made uh, treatments easy because the um, implants that we have available uh, look very similar to the tooth that we have to restore. So in terms of um, soft tissue, uh, I have, uh, my opinion is that uh, there's nothing uh, more uh, soft tissue friendly than uh, uh, ceramic. So every time you put uh, any metal that is connecting from inside the bone through the gum all the way outside is going to attract a lot more of black and bacteria compared to a surface that is non-conductant uh, because ceramic, the good thing of ceramic is that it's non-conductant, it doesn't suffer corrosion. So we have seen so much um, successful stories compared to titaniums that we see many, many patients with um, titanium implants that are um, red and they don't seem to tolerate their gums are not really happy. And when um, the industry has informed the professionals that in order to avoid the metal seeing through, the doctors need to put the implants even deeper than two decades ago, because two decades ago, the titanium implants were soft tissue. And then the implants were really clean because there were the Connection was super changeable, but now everything is done bone level. And to us, that we like to see healthy gums, to us, this is a huge mistake. You know, uh, this is our opinion. And the good thing of our implants is that it's not, um, we are not disturbing any of the biologic space. So that's one of the reasons that we developed these systems because we wanted to have uh, patients, at least patients with small amount of missing teeth because this treatment uh, is not for all types of patients. So patients that have very, very um, severe type of periodontitis with natural teeth and they have mobility on teeth, this is not the right type of implant. But patients that are missing uh, teeth in multiple positions, uh, we think that there is nothing in terms of health that matches these uh, the properties of this material, you know? So we are happy to uh, teach other doctors um, the benefits, you know, and knowing the limitations because 
in every like everything knowing the limitations of a material is key because if you think that with every product in the market you can do all the treatments that they tell you that it, you can do you're going to be in trouble you know because your your learning curve is going to be terrible so at least um knowing what the potential is of the material um i think uh, doctors have had very good um, experiences you know a couple of questions so one question would be uh, uh, how long the uh, this this uh, uh, type of uh, implant is on the market uh, and in what country it's starting from yes this started in 2004 yeah. in uh, barcelona spain i see and and uh, the FDA approved already for US. The FDA was approved in 2011, so okay. now it's been a little bit over 10 years, like right. 11. I see. And uh, in your office, do you use any other implant system? Like I said before, mm. there are some limitations that our implants are not able to um, be placed for A, B, and C reasons because of the type of the inclination of the bone, the um, how thick the bone is. There's some limitations and sometimes we are um, forced, even though we don't like, but sometimes we are forced to use titanium implants, yes. Okay. And we we don't have any, um, we don't have any um, uh, partnership with any titanium implant. So uh, we always ask the patient if they have any preference, if they want, uh, European brand, if they want uh, an American brand or an uh, uh, Asian brand. So to us, mm -hmm. informing the patient of what type of uh, product they can look for, because nowadays patients at home, they do a lot of research, you know, mm -hmm. and the worst thing you can do is just think that you know more than the patient and just place one product and maybe the patient would think that you would never use, you know. So the first thing we do is explain the patient what are the alternatives mm -hmm. uh, starting from always from the most simple which is denture when we have to use titanium implants sometimes the easiest is to say try to go with a denture for some months and see if uh, if you are happy with that because every time you combine um, implants there's always some kind of maintenance and uh, yeah so so you, are you saying that uh, 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 with this type of implant, the uh, uh, the zirconium implant, you, we can use it for denture or we don't use it? For yes, that? yes, but there has to be bone. There has to be good amount of bone. How are you, I don't know if you are familiar, but in dentistry, uh, some patients have so poor bone that they either have bone grafts from the hip or mm -hmm. some other areas, or they have mini implants, you know? So I'm, I'm telling of this type of patients that um, the alternatives are uh, very few and they have sometimes been trying with glue or well, some type of um, materials to have more suction on the denture and they are not successful. So yeah, sometimes we have to use um, products that are not ceramic, yes. Because of, the, because of the properties of the material, which is less elastic, you know? So, Dr. Do, do you are, are you uh, also the manufacturer or you are? Uh, yes, we manufacture, we distribute them, and we mm. do the training. So, we are, um, we are the same uh, people. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Dr. Carmen, what do you like about uh, um, this implant system? Like, what, what kind of procedure, what kind of case scenario where you, you, you pretty much go ahead and do it right away with the with this with this material with this implant system. So in my practice, we only use this this root implants. Uh, I love the um, clinical support from Dr. Javi Oliva and his brother, Dr. Joseph. Um, I think that's a key. I just want to give the best for my patients, and they help me with everything, which I highly appreciate. Um, I do everything. I, my patients come here because they don't want uh, to miss a tooth. They don't. They want infections out. They don't want any metal. So because I practice holistic, they come here especially for this type of implants. 
So um, in my case, is just just explain the properties they are looking for that. It's very easy for me because they already know what they want and that's what we offer. They want the PRF, they want the laser, they want the ozone and they want the ceramic implants. And from the ceramic implant systems that I know, uh, this is that I like the most because it's one piece. The emergence profile is amazing. The healing is amazing. So I have done like full mouth and I have done also individuals and also for bridges. I had placed the cera root in every area of the mouth. Um, I really like it. I like everything. The way that we plan it in the, so I have a CVCT, I have plan maker, and we can do the virtual placement and then we can just plan the surgery and just the healing is amazing. So we always tell the patients it's going to heal from three to six months and a lot of times two and a half months and the, the implant is like really well also integrated and we're just ready to to start planning for the crown we never go before three months because we want to be cautious but it's amazing how they heal i'm really pleased with that so i started just you know just seeing how it was going to be and now it's my favorite procedure now i just want to play implants every day because patients are so grateful we have placed these implants in people with autoimmune diseases with cancer uh, with a lot of chemical allergies and they are doing amazing. So we have a lot of testimonials in our YouTube channel because they give us the testimonial they want to help more people. And, and it's really good. It's really good because of that. So I really, I really like it. And yeah, I uh, highly recommend it. That's why we do the classes. Can I um, share with you uh, some uh, images? If you can, uh, Dr. Carmen, I have a... Uh fly here in my office <laughs> if you can share uh, make Very us a uh, host uh, unless you have some images that you want to share first but i think you have to allow me to be host of the um, Ooh, presentation let's um, see how how do i do that let me see if i uh, share screen it says uh, um, uh make uh on the user if you click on my name it says uh, make uh, him host or something like this. Okay, let me see. When you click on the participants, uh, I think you can uh, make me. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I got it. Yeah. All right, you are the host now. Okay, so I'm going to share um, screen and I'm going to explain you a little bit. The um, Are you able to see the screen? Yep. Okay, so so yes, this is this is one of the um, uh, explanation we have for patients that uh, this is uh, uh, of course um, still being used in some offices, but less and less frequent. So more patients are demanding um, composite or ceramic inlays, and uh, it's going to be. Not too many years that we will have these type of crowns in museums, you know, because uh, people do not like to have a chipping on a ceramic and then having to see the PFM underneath. And for many cases, we will start to see that um, cases that do not require like a lot of training and uh, very straightforward cases, we will start to see more and more use of uh, ceramic implants and this is one of the diagram that sometimes we like to explain to patients that uh, many many years ago we used to have the um, implant that was uh, screwed uh, the denture was screwed to the implant then there was an abutment that the crown was cemented on and then um, when patients started to demand more aesthetic treatments because in the decades ago when somebody was demanding an implant, uh, they could not ask for aesthetics because the doctor was just starting with implants and the doctor would simply say, I'm just gonna give you a tooth for eating, but don't ask me about aesthetics because we just learned about this type of uh, solution. But uh, more and more treatments were done. Um, there was more aesthetic demand and more success. So then we had to implement uh, superstructures 
made of ceramic because patients were complaining about the discoloration. And this is the, um, the big, the big um, gap that uh, we have here microscopically. Uh, uh, to us, uh, to the eye, it's a very thin um, space. But for the bacteria, this is a huge, huge environment, this type of connection. And the deeper we put this connection inside the bone, because this is supposed to be bone level and this is supposed to be tissue thickness, the deeper we put this to hide the metal, the more trouble we're bringing to the patient's mouth. At least this is from my point of view. I'm talking as um, a, a human being that likes to see very, very healthy gum first, and then second, aesthetics. But first, my objective is patient with really healthy gums. And we, were, um, we thought that getting rid of this connection with uh, developing something one piece that would not create um, subgingival bacteria would make the gum more happy. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the diagram, when we look at ceramic implants uh, and when we look at titanium implants we see uh, um, i'm not sure if you see my mouse moving but in it is in, moving, pati yeah. Yeah, in it patients is. that are having titanium implants just because uh, the industry is telling us that in order for the patient not to see the metal you need to place it deeper um, we're seeing more and more uh, problems with the gum and more and more pockets because uh, we are placing connections far down and palatally so that um, patients are not complaining about the color and about a dark shoulder. And the benefits of something tooth colored is that when you prep and when you're ready to restore, you don't have nothing to hide because you actually like the material that you are cementing the crown on top of it. And then um, in terms of what type of material the zirconia is, we have, um, what we're working with is an oxide. And when we look at the composition, uh, which is, this is the um, maybe 95% of uh, ceramic crowns uh, done worldwide uh, is done with this exact composition, which is uh, zirconium oxide with yttrium oxide. This is 95% of dental work in terms of all ceramic, I'm, I'm talking about all ceramic. And this is a 100% ceramic material. And when the mm, industry is trying to obtain the element, which is ZR in the periodic table, the element zirconium in nature, when they try to obtain the element from nature, they are able to obtain uh, metal. So when someone says zirconium is a metal, that's true because um, we're talking about just the pure element. But when we are talking about the oxide, which is the, the composition that we work with, we work with zirconium oxide and yttrium oxide, that is a ceramic material that doesn't conduct electricity, it's not bendable. Um, it doesn't corrode, so you cannot attack attack the, the material with acids. And this is one of the differences that we um, like to explain. And then just because it's a non-conductant and it's, not, it's a material that it's not able to release ions, as opposed to titanium, that titanium, you can have an oxidation. And uh, oxidation in implants is a... It's a mandatory and it's an important process to happen because without oxidation, there, would, there wouldn't be osseointegration. integration. So the problem is that the oxidation, when there is too much, the oxidation goes everywhere, not just in the bone, but in the gum, but in the lymphatic nodules. So with these, with ceramic implants, you don't have this oxidation. And patients can have multiple implants and they don't have more zirconium oxide in their bodies. And it's because the ceramics do not have this type of corrosion. And um, 
yes so i'm happy to answer more questions or explain you more about uh topics um about this material um and so the, then your website is the uh the three w's dot mm -hmm. okay thank you and very much. um and this is another uh, explanation we like to give so when we look at um titanium implants we have connections that we have to screw uh, components on top of them and this is this has been available for decades like uh, maybe over 50 years 50 years ago this started so but it has its limitations and to us the biggest biggest limitation is that uh, because we are placing them deeper and deeper and deeper we are creating more um, problems in terms of gum and bone so when we place implants we place them to be uh, like a tooth replacement so when they heal many many times they heal like this they heal with no gum covering almost the entire implant and if you have some parts of the implant that it's covered you just simply laser them and then you have the benefit of course if you have intraoral digital impressions you are seeing exactly the shoulder that you want to restore whereas if you have a titanium implant that it's covered in gum or with a um, cover screw you basically don't know what type of connection you're gonna you're gonna restore with especially if the implant was placed by someone else and the someone else meaning not someone that is referring to you so the patient comes from another town that they moved and then they want to continue the treatment but the doctor that they work with maybe just quit and they don't have the medical chart so this is this type of implants you don't need a catalog to restore this that's the beauty of it that you can finish dentistry of school and the next day that a patient like this comes into your office you restore without taking a phone call and asking send me this send me that i need to borrow a wrench i need to so this is um this is a for, for, for us this is a very very uh, advanced in uh, ergonomics and simplicity you know i agree i agree uh, um so for these uh, uh sarah root implant type uh, how often do you placed immediate for anterior and put a temporary crown on the same day do you how often do you do that or as much it... as we can because mm -hmm. they as we were talking the implants are quite big so if you extract and let it heal mm -hmm. many many times you are not gonna find the bone that used to be there you know right so for example all the cases that you see here mm -hmm. the majority of them were done immediate mm -hmm. And we are not very, very fans of immediate crowns. So we don't like to put crowns on the same day that we place the implant. And the reason is because we clearly see more failures with implants that are immediately loaded. So we call to us immediately loaded or immediately restored with a crown, even if the crown is out of occlusion. To us, it's an immediate loading. We put it in the same category. Mm -hmm. because the patients can play with the tongue patients can bite and forget about it because after 15 days nothing is painful and then they just bite and they forget they have an implant so the way we do the protocol and the way we uh, explain patients is that they have to wear a retainer which is an essex it's like the in the invisible orthodontics that you are wearing some yeah. kind of plastic shell and then you put it in and then you um, have the tooth healing uh, behind it. So um, I think we have uh, one case or two cases here with um, Essex retainer visible, but the majority of these cases are, uh, the majority of these cases are um, immediate. So very, very often because we see a big disadvantage waiting for healing because when you wait for healing sometimes you lose the papilla as well you know and the tissues end up more flat 
-hmm. So um, yes, it's a the best the best uh, treatment that we think of always is not placing the crown on the same day. Yeah, not not placing on the same day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a, about three minutes left uh, on mm -hmm. our uh, podcast. Uh, I would like to uh, thank you for your time, Dr. Carmen Bird and Dr. Savi. Uh, mm -hmm. You you spent some time to uh, uh, almost inform the uh, generation of uh, young dentists and uh, dentists that have been doing implant for a long time that uh, these thing that some of us seen it, but we never have chance to talk to you guys who been there, done that, and you mm -hmm. see successful. And uh, I can assure that uh, the audience who watching this, uh, you know, you can contact uh, the two doctor here and uh, and uh, reach out to them and learn more. Uh, probably, perhaps we want to go there and take the class. Uh, can you tell us the, what are those two days that you have for the event next yes. uh, this year? Let me let me open um, let me open the calendar mm -hmm. and. Uh, We have here on the website, we have uh, training and education, and then we have a calendar of events. And um, the uh, calendar shows the, what type of course we have. And then um, this is what we like to show uh, freehand. We like to show freehand uh, placement of the implant. And we like to show guided. So sometimes when we see an easy case at Dr. Berg's office, we are happy to show freehand because sometimes in dentistry, not, not always everything can be guided. So it's good that the doctor gets uh, comfortable doing every now and then some freehand and then um, guided. So we teach both. Yep. And uh, please, Dr. Berg, uh, give some uh, explanation about. Um, comments from the course if you want yep, we have one minute so please uh, go ahead and, uh, and let us know <laughs> when we're going to see us, you guys again yeah and also the main thing that I, I would like to share with other dentists is that it's a really easy way to start placing implants and giving help to our patients and i started from zero so that's why i like to share my protocol because it was just from zero and so it's doable for every dentist it's just just to want to do it and just get the proper training. And it is amazing. So I really recommend that. And yeah, just come to our classes and you will have also a lot of fun. I look forward to see you guys again for a next podcast sometime. But thank you so much for your time. Uh, you guys have, yeah, thank uh, you both for have having a great us. day. Thank you. See you thank next you time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.